Hey, this is uh, Dan Baldwin, and this is the Chicago CIO's five-point checklist to get the fastest, most reliable internet service at the best price from the Chicago ICT Consultor and Broker Co-op. Now, if you're a CIO, if you're an IT director, and you're in the Chicagoland area, you can go ahead and download this uh, document that I'm uh, uh, going from to make this video and kind of follow along. It's designed to help you, a uh, single location um, CIO or IT director to really self-assess and find out what's special about your business that would make it, you know, kind of complicated to order improved internet service. Uh, this checklist that we're going to go through together is exactly the same checklist that I use as a ITC consultant, ICT consultant, and um, I take my clients through it just to learn anything that's special going on. But you can really do it for yourself, especially if you're a single location uh, company, and then educate yourself what you need to know and what are the special tricks what you know a consultant would ask you and then educate yourself and then go in and order your own um, internet upgrades and so you can save money uh, by buying through our uh, co-op uh, order line and then you know sign up for our newsletter and hear about all the great things that we have going on and then when you do need uh, a consultant you can call and get an appointment and then we can especially uh, consult with you so let's go ahead and take you through this checklist uh, the first four items really um, help us understand what's special about your business and is there something weird going on that would make it complicated or difficult but once you sell assess with these same questions that we use with our clients, you'll really know what's the right internet because there's six types of internet that you can uh, order and you'll find figure out what's the best combination for your unique business. So item number one, what's your current ICT uh, situation? Now ICT of course is information and communications technology. We used to call it telecom or IT or cloud or, or something but you know there's so many words. It's all really just ICT, three letter acronym, keep Keeps it all nice and simple. So what's your monthly spend on telecom, internet, managed services, cloud, all this IT, ICT, ICT stuff? If it's less than $1,000, you're going to be really hard pressed to get a consultant to come out and visit with you uh, on site unless you pay them uh, directly. So what you can do though is you can still work with the uh, consultants co-op group by ordering through their order line because they've negotiated, we've negotiated uh, special prices, uh, discount prices from over 100 vendors and you can take uh, advantage of that line. So, but you really need to really still self-assess. Um, but if you spend less than a thousand bucks, you can probably just order directly from the line. Now, the second thing you want to know is uh, 1B, who are your current ICT providers and what's the contract status of each? Because even when you call the order line, you're going to be talking to someone who's going to consult with you a little bit. And if you still have a long-term contract, then you really can't order new services if because you know you can't really get out of the old contract. So they can tell you, you know, what's the uh, pros and cons of you know the other contracts. Now, if you do have a big onerous contract with a big three carrier or something and you just don't feel like you're getting a good deal, a, a consultant still can help you because we use what's called the letter of agency strategy, where if you have over 12 months left, you sign a letter of agency with a uh, ICT consultant, and that ICT consultant then for a fee, a negotiating fee, will contact your current carriers and say, look, uh, when this contract is up 14 months from now, this customer is going to switch over to a different service provider if you don't renegotiate now. And that's usually the teeth that they need to see for them to take it seriously and then they'll go ahead and renegotiate your contract. You might have to extend it back out to a two or three year term, but then you'll get really good rates and then you pay the ICT consultant a fee for uh, helping out with that and that's called the letter of agency strategy. Uh, finally, 1C, who's your general, I, general contractor for ICT? Okay, if you don't have a strong ICT staffer on your IT department, then you might want to seriously consider bringing in a ICT consultant to help organize all your bills, go through all of your vendors, and really have someone be in charge so you have a competent ICT strategy going forward so you don't end up in the situation that you might find yourself now where you have internet that just doesn't work and it doesn't look like anybody's planning and it's just 
doesn't make sense. Get a uh, contractor, a general contractor, that's what ICT consultant does, and uh, get everything organized. So going on to checklist item number two, what are the business critical applications that help you do what for whom? This is where you will really need to know what it is that you do for a living, uh, who are your customers, and what business applications help you do what you do for your customers. Uh, what's the history of your business? How is it did you get to the ICT solutions that you have now? Who made the decisions in the past? So those are the things that we'll need to know and you'll have to consider for yourself. Who are your customers and what do you do for them? You know, how does the communications technology really help you do or how does lack of communication technology uh, hinder you from doing that? And what are your competitive advantages and weaknesses and how is that affected by, uh, you know, cutting edge IT, ICT? Are some of your, advantage, your uh, competitors pulling ahead of you because they do it better? Then, uh, Point number three, what are your business pain points, the change requirements and opportunities? What what made you look at this video today? I mean, what pain are you trying to resolve? Is your busy business moving, expanding, and contracting? And again, what uh, competitive opportunity might you be trying to take advantage of? And then finally, you really need to write down what do you need to do, what do you what do you think you want to do and when do you want to do it by? Most everybody that we talk to, they've already got in mind, they think they know what they want to do and they certainly know what their own deadlines are. When you call our order hotline, you'll definitely want to talk to the uh, certified uh, consultant taking your order, uh, what your deadlines are because some internet can get installed in just a couple of days and other takes 90 days or more. And if you've got hard deadlines, if you're moving, if you're contracting, if you're expanding, these are things that we need to know about so we can plan to make sure that we get what you need where it is that you need it when you need it. All right, so we've talked about those four things. You need to really write them down. And when you're placing your order, make sure you bring this up with the order specialist so uh, they know or they can give you the proper expectations for your upgraded internet. All right, so now we're to number five. This is kind of the internet matrix. There are six types of internet, all right, and you're going to want to get one, two, or even three different types of the internet to give you the most bulletproof service. So the two major categories are wired and wireless, okay? Uh, you know, wired, you know, through the ground wireless through the air. And it's really good to combine, you know, a wired and a wireless so you have really good redundancy. You don't want to have two uh, terrestrial or ground wired because if something happens in your basement, it will most likely take out both. Uh, as well, if you have a storm that, you know, takes out a wired or wireless internet, it probably won't affect it. So if you want to have true redundancy, you're going to want to have one internet connection come through the air wireless and one come through the ground wired. But now let's take a look at the three types of wired internet first. Your first and best internet is always going to be fiber. Okay, now if you're in any sort of business park, uh, especially if you're in a business high rise or any you know, high density business area, you're probably going to have multiple fiber providers that you can tap into that they've lit your building, uh, where basically they just have to find out, you know, what do you need, how much do you need, and they'll turn it on for you within days, if not hours, and you can have multiple uh, carriers to choose from. Probably, I'm guessing 25% of big businesses have access to fiber. All right, now fiber is synchronous, meaning that your upload speed and your download speed is going to be the same. And fiber is almost always enterprise grade, meaning there is a 99.9% .9 chance that you're always going to get exactly what you've ordered. And that's a good thing. So if you can get fiber, you always sign up for it because it's the cheapest, it's the best, and, you know, hands down. But the three quarters of businesses that don't have access to fiber, what do they do? Well, the next uh, type is a coax cable. Now, coax cable is being trenched in for 15 years, and probably 80% of businesses uh, that are not terribly remote have access to uh, 
coax. Now coax is what we call a best effort uh, synchronous, asynchronous service, meaning the download is almost always going to be faster than the upload. So if you do a lot of uploads, then you have to buy you know bigger pipes. Uh, and it's also best effort service, meaning that probably 90% of the time you're going to get what you think you're paying for. 10% of the time it's just not going to be there. All right, and tough cookies. Uh, you can call the cable company and says, ah, you know, it's not working well, or blah blah blah. You know, 10% uh, of the time it really is bad, and they're going to say, well. That's what best effort service is all about. If you want enter, uh, perfect service, buy enterprise grade fiber, costs a lot more. So most businesses, they do learn to live with cable, especially if they've got a, if they're uh, traffic shaping with a wireless service. Uh, 4G and satellite works out really well to complement uh, coax, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's see. Not a lot much more to say about um, uh, coax. The last type of the third type of wireline uh, internet is your old uh, copper internet, and these are the original dial-up lines where you had an analog modem, a twisted simple twisted pair. But then also we all remember, you know, at least people of my age, DSL, the original internet, where they bring in, you know, internet. It's kind of like cable asynchronous speeds, where your down Download is always faster than your upload. You know, it used to be, you know, six meg down, one meg up. Now you can sometimes get 15 megs down, three megs up for DSL. DSL used to be, you know, kind of expensive if it was any good, you know, a couple hundred bucks, but now anymore uh, because. You know, everybody can kind of get cable. Uh, DSL generally runs less than a hundred bucks. So if you're really out at the uh, end of the turnip line, um, you know, DSL might be your only option. But generally, it's pretty inexpensive, and it comes off of uh, the uh, copper from the phone company, and that they are actually required to continue to maintain that. And as well, if you only can get a phone line, then at least you can get dial-up from the old days. And if all you're trying to do is some telemetry, that might work just fine. So we've talked about the three types of wired internet, fiber, coax, and mostly DSL. Now, the three types of wireless are really up and coming. Uh, if you can get, very few people actually use uh, DSL unless they can't get anything else. So it's either going to be fiber or coax, and then you're going to mix the fiber or coax with one of these three types of wireless we're going to tell you about. Now, the first type is fixed wireless. And fixed wireless is wireline-like in that, unlike the other types of uh, wireless, they're not really metered because um, the other two types, really it is, even though they're approaching unlimited, quote-unquote unlimited, it really is a metered service, and at some point, they're really going to kind of turn you off. Not so with fixed wireless, because fixed wireless is really wireline, because what they do is they take two dishes, and they microwave the internet kind of the last mile, but at the other end of the dish, here's your dish, and here's the service provider's dish, uh, is connected to wired internet, or usually a fiber, and so there's not, it's not really metered, and so if you can get fixed wireless, uh, generally it's going to be even better than fiber, because it's going to be cheaper than fiber. Uh, now, fixed wireless used to have kind of a bad rap, saying, well, you know, you know, thunderstorms or hailstorms or, or something, it's going to knock it out. It's not really been my experience. Uh, people that have fixed wireless generally is 20 to 30 percent less than fiber, even though the uh, fixed wireless provider is going to try to get it as close to fiber as they can competitively achieve. But with fixed wireless, um, the service provider, once they put in your dish, it's a fixed cost, and the marginal cost to give you more internet speed, they really don't have a huge marginal cost. And so you want to get in with a fixed wireless provider with as slow a speed as you can, and then you know kind of come back and inch it up, inch it up, inch it up, and you usually get a great deal. Uh, if you can get fixed wireless, kind of pair that with uh, coax, and you have an awesome uh, wired wireless uh, combination and probably the best rate that you're going to find. 
Now, of course, one thing that, as, as I've said, they're going to put an actual physical dish on your roof, and then it has to have a path from that dish all the way down to your um, computer room. So if you're renting a building, your building owner doesn't really allow that sort of thing, that might, you know, put the kibosh on it. But that's certainly an important thing to understand, kind of like when you're getting direct TV on your house, you know, have to mount it somewhere and it has to have the wire go all the way down to where the business is going to happen, you know, in your modem. So the next type of, um, wireless internet is 4G LTE and this is the same sort of internet that you get with your smartphone. So if you've ever um, put your smartphone in hotspot mode so you can get internet for your laptop that's exactly what we're talking about. And so what will happen is generally you're not going to uh, use your smartphone to power your whole uh, business. What you'll do is the same sort of chip that is in your smartphone, you'll put it into a little box, you know, BEC Technologies makes an awesome box. And then that box has an Ethernet cord that goes into your firewall or your switch and it provides internet just the same as an Ethernet connection from a fiber provider or a coax provider. Now the only downside to uh, 4G is uh, the antenna because with uh, fixed wireless your antenna is on the roof okay but with your uh, 4G the antenna is usually on the box that you plug into the fixed wireless that you plug into the firewall or the switch and so to know if you're going to be if it's going to work just walk into your computer room and look at your own smartphone how many bars do you have now many uh, fixed wireless or 4G providers, if you go through your ICT consultant, can hook you up with a 4G provider that can rig up special antennas up to your building. Now, these antennas, you know, don't always add a whole lot of bars. And so before you sign a serious contract for these antennas, uh, you know, ask them, well, I've only got two bars in my uh, room or in my uh, computer room. Are you sure I'm going to get you know, five bars with this antenna and get some sort of, you know, something in writing because it doesn't always work out. Now, one great thing about the 4G is it's the number one choice if you have a kiosk, if you have internet over the IoT, internet over Internet of Things or machine to machine, M to M. Anytime you got two computers trying to talk to each other and they're remote, especially, 4G is the way to go. So we're talking about, you know, you put a 4G trip in your truck so you can track all of your assets. You, they're putting 4G and um, even Bluetooth uh, items on, you know, anything that moves around, um, you know, IV poles in hospitals. And so 4G and, and Bluetooth are things that you're going to want to talk to. We're not really going to talk a lot about Bluetooth here, but uh, look at 4G, talk to your ICT provider about 4G if you're kind of tracking things that move around a lot, especially uh, trucks and such. Now the last type, the sixth type, the third type of wireless, sixth type of internet total is satellite internet. Now satellite internet is really becoming big. Uh, you know, 15 years ago when it first came out, you know, only people that got it were people that couldn't get anything else, couldn't even get DSL. And the latency, oh my goodness, it would give you brain cancer. But no more. Those days are long gone. They've got new satellites up there, and the people that are ordering satellites, uh, internet, are very happy with it. You can even run a VoIP phone off of satellite internet. Now it's not perfect, but the latency is way down. Uh, you can get 15 megs down, four megs up, almost anywhere in the country. And there, uh, and it, it it has been metered, but just today, you know, December 2017, Exceed has announced that they have an unlimited package now for their uh, 299 price. So, you know, it's not the cheapest, but if you have a remote location, this is a real game changer because now you can seriously have a business anywhere that you've got access to electricity and then you have a rooftop that can look at the uh, southern horizon. So look at satellite. These are this the sixth type of internet. So again, uh, your f three types of wireless internet are going to be fixed wireless, um, 4G, and then a satellite. Okay, great. So now you know about the six types. Which ones are you going to choose? Well, you don't really know until you find out what's available at your business. Okay, so 
the way you find that out is you you call the order hotline okay because the person that answers the order hotline they're going to be a, a certified order taker that knows all about these um, six types of internet and they're going to ask you for your service address and they're going to type that into their computer and it's going to tell them specifically especially for the wireline internet which ones are available at your business so they'll tell you if you have fiber if they have more than one fiber provider they're going to tell you if you have coax now with coax cable usually you only have one coax cable provider per area so while you might have multiple fiber providers you're only ever going to have one cable provider and but they'll tell you who it is and they'll tell you what the price options are and then of course a DSL if uh, you have access to that now as far as the four excuse me the three wireless providers um, if, if you can see from your building top you know the southern horizon you know there's no buildings or trees in the way then you're going to be able to get satellite the same if uh, you go into your uh, computer room look at your cell phone your smartphone from Verizon or AT&T if you've got bars boom you can get it all right now the only time it's really tough to find fixed wire it's always tough to find fixed wireless uh, and some national uh, order taking lines they won't have a database their database won't have the fixed wireless providers because most of them you know they're kind of mom and pop operations you can go to the wispa.org website WISPA wireless internet service providers association website and try to look up if there is a uh, fixed wireless provider in your area. Now, if you're working with a um, ICT pro who really is, um, you know, local, they really know the local um, marketplace, they're going to know which fixed wireless providers are available, and more importantly, which ones are good enough to do business with. Because about 20% of the fixed wireless providers in my uh, experience are kind of fly-by-night organizations you really need to check out the references now 80% of them are rock-solid they're super strong uh, they're small businesses but they're awesome to do business with you're generally going to be doing business with the owner and uh, you get special deals all the time so definitely search for fixed wireless because uh, like I said before if you've got fixed wireless available it's going to be your first choice even above uh, fiber so once you know uh, what is available, then you're pretty much going to be able to um, make your decision moving forward as we go through these other little uh, checklist items. But one thing to that's kind of throw you off is sometimes they'll come back and say either the coax or the fiber is really close, but it's not there. And you would have to, someone's going to have to pay a construction fee to trench the coax or the fiber the west, rest of the way to the building. Now you go, Ooh, you know, what do you know? What do you do? Do you get involved with that? The answer is yes. Okay, if you have signed a long-term lease for your building, and you know you're 500 feet away from having coax or fiber, you definitely want to get them to estimate what it's going to cost to get to you. Now here's the tricky part is it costs the coax and fiber provider money to try to you know figure out exactly how much those construction fees are going to be so the only way they'll really tell you what they're going to be so you can make a decision is if you sign a agreement with them for their retail services now it might sound like a uh, fishy deal but it's not because uh, if you like their normal retail rates but you know you can't get them because you know they have to do construction <clears throat> go ahead and sign a contract because then what they'll do is they'll go out and they'll figure the construction costs and 25 percent of the time they'll go you know what we're, we're not going to charge anything construction. We're going to go ahead and trench it in on at our dime, and then you can have it at these uh, retail rates. And great, everyone's happy. You just have to wait for the construction time period, which is you know anywhere from 30 to 60 days generally. Uh, now the other times is they'll come back to you and say, well, you know, it's going to cost us 20 grand, and so you have to pay three grand, and we'll pay 17 grand. You know, again, if you have a long-term contract, even if you're having to amortize the cost of that construction it's generally worth it because once you get fiber or uh, coax then you're really going to love it now of course this is assuming that you can't get a uh, fixed wireless 
Okay, so now you know which six are available. You know what your construction costs are going to be, if any. Are you ready to place an order for internet? Maybe. All right, but before you do that, let's go ahead and look at a couple of more issues that you may need to uh, uh, consider. So before placing any orders, you definitely want to find out what's your static IP situation. Do you have any static IPs, number one, and will they need to be changed or ported over? Now, a static IP, of course, is an ad, uh, address that you put on a specific piece of equipment that's on your premises. And so if you have other businesses that have to log in or access your servers, they're going to do that through this uh, publicly addressable uh, static IP. Now, you know, some businesses have one or two. Actually, in my understanding, in my experience, probably only 30% of businesses have any static IPs, and if they have static IPs, there's only a couple of them, and it's not that big a deal to uh, change them out, all right? If you have a lot of them, sometimes you'll be able to port them over. Let's say if you have a lot of static IPs with one of the big three carriers, and but you want to switch over to a big three carrier reseller, then 50% uh, of the time that reseller will be able to port over those static IPs. Uh, and that can be uh, a, a big help because you're going to save a lot of money with the big three reseller, but then you don't have to swap out all those static IPs. So find out about the static IPs. You don't want to find out after you've signed a contract that you know, you're not even going to be able to use the new circuit because you can't switch out your static because the old service provider will not release those static IPs. All right, the second uh, thing is a failover, bonding, and acceleration. Okay, now what are these things and how does it work with your firewall or SD-WAN? Now, failover is the big thing, all right, because in the old days, internet was terribly expensive and everybody you know, if they had one internet connection, they were pretty happy about it. And when that internet connection went down, they just learned to live without internet until it came back up. Not anymore. Okay, almost every business that is in business because of the internet or the internet access is critical. They have two internet connections. Uh, as we said before, they have, you know, one uh, wire, you know, usually you'll have fiber and then coax and or uh, coax and um, you know, 4G or satellite, I strongly recommend having, a, as I said before, a wired and a wireless. So fiber and 4G or, or what a lot of businesses will do, they'll have fiber and coax, you know, and what they'll do is they'll traffic shape the two of them together and then they'll have a third wireless, either 4G or satellite, and then they use the fiber and the coax and then the 4G failover. So how do you get failover? Failover is pretty simple to do. You just need a firewall that can take one, two, or three WAN connections. So when you look at the back of your firewall, it might only say, you know, one WAN connection and then four LAN connections. But a little known fact is um, your uh, firewall provider should be able to reprogram one of the LAN connections to be a WAN connection. But, you know, just upgrade your firewall. They're not really that expensive and get a more, if you need more internet, you're probably having more uh, throughput. So you want a little bit more horsepower uh, get yourself a um, uh, firewall that has two WAN ports, and then if you put that third um, internet connection in, and then you know uh, swap out one of the LAN ports. All right, and then what will happen is the fire. Generally, what the firewalls will do is if you just have two, you have uh, wired and then wireless for failover, then the firewall will put all of the uh, uh, applications through the wired connection until the wired connection goes down and then it'll fail over to the 4G. And that was because the 4G was metered. A lot of people had satellite uh, internet for uh, failover and then it was only one gig and it doesn't take long to go through one gig you know, when you fail over. Anymore though, uh, since satellite and 4G is approaching uh, unlimited, you 
you can start doing a little bit of traffic shaping where what you'll do is you'll always put your FTP transfers um, over the uh, fiber or coax and then you know believe it or not you can put your voice over the 4G especially if it's uh, 4G it works really really well uh, and then um, so you're doing a little bit of traffic shaping with your firewall and then certainly the failover with the firewall now when it comes to uh, bonding and acceleration that's going to be with a SD WAN device. Now, let me tell you what bonding is. Uh, it's easy to think about. Um, let's say that you have a huge, you know, 25 gig, you know, 30 minute uh, video file that you're trying to upload. Now, with uh, firewalls, have two internet connections. You have one big file. You have to choose one or the other. A firewall will not split it and then, you know, put half the FTP file over one connection and half over the other. It's just one or the other. Okay, so you can't really bond um, uh, two internet connections, a 10 meg and a 10 meg and get 20 using a firewall. With an SD-WAN device, you can do that. Okay, and so if you uh, want to bond your, uh, like a fiber, let's say you have 100 meg fiber, and then you have uh, 100 by 20 coax, and you want to bond them together, so on your uploads, you get 120 megs, and for your downloads, you get 200 megs, you're going to need an SD-WAN box to do that. And also, the SD-WAN can do acceleration in the internet, because SD-WAN, there's magic, believe it or not. Never thought there was really magic in the internet, but the SD-WAN technology, it's 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 basically magic, where it can sense a you know outage uh, you know somewhere on the public internet and then route around it. Okay, because normally firewalls they're pretty dumb. Uh, they don't know that there's an outage in Chicago and you can route around by going through Detroit. But SD-WAN providers can do that, uh, and so that acceleration. If you want acceleration, if you want bonding, you're going to have to talk to uh, internet or ICT consultant and sales engineer about exactly what sort of acceleration and bonding that you want. Uh, and that's certainly something you want to do before you order an internet connection because a lot of the SD-WAN boxes are going to come with the internet connection because the number one seller of SD-WAN boxes are carriers. So you don't want to buy a dirt cheap uh, internet connection uh, from a carrier that doesn't do SD-WAN because for just a couple bucks more, you could have got it from the other internet provider that you know really does uh, SD-WAN acceleration and bonding really well. Uh, now there's about 22 dozen different SD-WAN you know technologies and Two-thirds of them are distributed through carriers. About one-third of them are distributed through some sort of VAR or uh, managed services provider. So if you want that acceleration or bonding, definitely talk to your ICT uh, consultant broker and his or her sales engineer. You want to make an appointment, you know, even a 30-minute appointment over the phone will answer all your questions. And do this before you place the order because then you'll get the best deal, the best acceleration, the best bonding, the best failover. Um, you know, with the same order that you're going to uh, play. So you can make a big mistake here because you can lock yourself out of a good failover or bonding or acceleration option if you don't get that appointment with an ICT consultant and his or her sales engineer. All right, now there's one other gotcha. If anybody has mentioned anything, these acronyms, point to point, MPLS, VPN, or MPLS plus SD-WAN, you want to go, oh, time out. And you're going to want to get an ICT uh, consultant and, again, his or her um, sales engineer on the line for a 30-minute phone call. You don't need to do it in person. They can all be done over the phone. Trust me, they prefer to do it that way. Um, but then you're going to want to really talk about uh, what's the point-to-point. -point, what are you using point-to-point -point for? You can read the uh, document here. It kind of gives you the background of point-to-points. Uh, and then, of course, uh, MPLS. VPN, and then MPLS plus SD-WAN. I won't really get into it right now, but again, if you're hearing those four acronyms, you definitely want to have a timeout. Talk, and the um, ICT consultant and their sales engineer are really going to come in and say, well, what are you doing with these technologies? Who are telling you what about these four acronyms? And they'll flesh it all out. And then again, um, the managed services provider today kind of comes with the carrier and they can kind of 
put everything all in one basket. So you don't want to go with a dirt cheap uh, internet uh, provider if you're going to need to get a slightly higher internet provider slash managed services provider so they can set up your VPN correctly. Uh, MPLS plus SD-WAN is a great solution for people that need uh, high security and low latency. So again, when you hear these acronyms, time out, get yourself an appointment. And then, now we've talked a little bit about, you know, what's a managed service provider and a managed service provider combined with a carrier. Now, uh, this is kind of important because when you go to order your uh, your internet connections, once you finally decide, you can do it a couple of different ways. Now, you can order it with the carrier direct through the direct team. Never do that. All right. Not because they're not nice people. They are very nice people because a lot of them become consultants. But the challenge is if you're getting your sales engineering or your consulting from the carrier direct team, those people are going to be gone within a year. There's so many mergers. Uh, people come and go. But in the consultant side of the house, really, they stay forever because once you become a consultant, your, your life is really happy. You just stay forever. And so you're going to keep your consultant and sales engineer team forever. Even if you're ordering directly with a carrier, order it through the consultant, all right, because they put their, their direct carrier orders through a, um, uh, a master distributor for the carriers, and you're going to get tons and tons of awesome services, all right. Uh, but now there's one caveat to that. And that is the managed services provider. Now, there's a lot of resellers. They used to be called resellers. Now they're called managed services providers. And what they do is they resell the big three networks, all right? But what happens is so they don't have switches or fiber of their own, but they, they, they're the ones that bring in the SD-WAN technology. They're the ones that bring in the managed firewall and the managed switch. So if you want managed switches, you want managed firewalls, you want managed SD-WAN, you're going to want to place your internet order not directly with the carrier that doesn't offer those managed services, but you know either a carrier that excels in the managed services or with one of these new resellers who are managed services providers and they are really doing a great job. It's a single bill, managed firewall, managed switch, managed SD-WAN, plus all the internet. So ask your ICT consultant and their vendor neutral sales engineer which one of the resellers slash MSPs that are carriers are really doing a good job and ask them should I be placing this order through them instead of with the carrier direct even you know through the master distributor and I've kind of made this this pitch already all things being equal you know, unless you have a really robust IT staff that just loves to manage firewalls and switches, do yourself a huge favor and then just go with a managed services provider carrier because you don't really want to just order your internet. You want to order the internet with a managed firewall with a switch and say to your internet, uh, your ICT consultant and the vendor neutral sales engineer, hey, I really don't want to be setting up VPNs. I don't want to be, you know, managing all these routes for my multiple locations. I just want internet and VPN for my multiple locations that works all the way down to the managed switch. And here's why a managed switch is important because what'll ha if you look at your switch now, 80% of all the businesses out there, I mean, they're just Daisy chained up the wazoo. They've got hubs all over the place, and you don't even know really what is plugged into your current switch because it may not be managed. You may not be able to do VPNs or, excuse me, VLANs to do you know special connections. But once you have a managed switch provider, they can go into your managed switch. They can tell you whatever is plugged into every single. Um, a port on that managed switch and I've had customers that they convert over from dumb switches to carrier managed switches and it, it takes a little bit of cleanup but once you get that cleanup everybody's super happy because you get rid of all the daisy chained hubs out there every computer every appliance has its own port on the switch and then really all the problems go away I've had nightmare customer problems where they're complaining about slow internet, they're complaining about their computers don't work and blah 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 blah. Once we got them over to manage firewall and manage switch and we got rid of all the hubs, they just they loved, 
life. And all of a sudden, they get back to just doing what they do for a living for their customers instead of trying to figure out why is the internet so slow. All right, so do yourself a favor, make yourself happy, all things being equal. Get a managed firewall and a managed switch from your carrier and uh, just get out of the business of man maintaining that VPN. And so whenever you plug something into your switch, it's just going to work. All right, finally, you, uh, you know all about the six different types of Internet. You know all the you know you know the special peculiarities of your business. You know uh, how you want to do your failover. Uh, you know whether or not you man want managed firewall or managed switch. After you place your order, and everything's been delivered, or even now, do you really have a bulletproof um, internet? Do you really have bulletproof wide area network? Here's the stress test that you want to do. You don't speedtest.net forget that you don't want to do a speed test any 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 network can survive a speed test for 30 seconds here's the stress test that you want to do we call it the FTP stress test so what you'll do is and any uh, ICT consultant can show you how to do this because we show them how to do it um, what you do is you you'll download a one gig file and while that one gig file is downloading you'll upload a second one gig file. So you have a one gig file download coming down, you have another one gig file going up, and then you go ahead and make a, uh, a VoIP phone call, or better yet, a video conference call. Okay, now video and voice, very late, very latency sensitive. So if your network is getting hammered by these two simultaneous FTP upload and download, and uh, you can't make a video or a phone call, you know that you're 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 not there yet, and then when you've got a video or a voice phone call going on at the same time as you have these two FTP transfers, then go ahead and unplug your primary internet, okay? Because if your network is set up correctly and you've got a good failover, even when you unplug your primary network and you fail over to whatever it is that you have for failover, you shouldn't lose your video call. You shouldn't lose your voice call and you should not lose any either of those two FTP transfers. So if you can't do that now, that stress test now, you need to talk to an ICT uh, consultant and his or her sales engineer to find out why you can't do it because anybody can do that now. It's very inexpensive to do and until you can pass that stress test you haven't, you're not, you're not happy. You're not going to be happy. All of your users are going to be unhappy. They're going to be yelling at you. Uh, so uh, do yourself a favor. Do the stress test now. If you can pass the stress test now, you're already there. All you can do now is save money. Uh, but this is what we do. ICT consultants, our vendor neutral sales engineer, our independent ICT consultants, we're here to give you the best deal at the best price with the best services. So if you think you're ready to place an order, go ahead and place your order because the order taker will kind of walk you through a lot of what we've talked about. And if you've gone through this checklist, you'll be ready to place that order. If you have multiple locations, if you spend more than $1,000 a month on all of this stuff, if you need a multi-vendor solution, or you just need someone to be in charge of all this stuff, then go ahead and uh, call the phone number to uh, uh, make an appointment with a local ICT consultant broker and his or her vendor neutral sales engineer. Thanks a lot. Hope all this has been helpful. Tell your friends, um, you know, what we're doing here for CIOs and IT directors so we can help them as well. Thanks a lot.